Steve Maraboli, a renowned American speaker, once said that every time I was rejected from something good, I was redirected to something better. And I agree with that. I am Anusha, and today I would like to share my journey of rejections, dejections, the disappointments that followed, and how when I look back, I think they were my life's biggest blessings. What is rejection? Um, an act of being pushed away from someone or something. It hurts. Every time we are rejected, it hurts. If I am to take a poll here and ask how many of you have ever been rejected, I'm sure it would be 100% yes. All of us have been rejected on some or the other level. Uh, we've experienced a combination of few or all kind of rejections. Familial rejection. Rejection from one, many, or all members of our family of origin. Parental rejection. Rejection from either of our parents or both. Romantic rejection. I don't think that needs any introduction. Um, professional or academic rejection not getting into the school of our choice, the employer of our choice, the promotion that we deserve. It hurts. It's very painful. <laughs> and every time, if we find ourselves in that situation, we quickly get into this, this rabbit hole of negativity. Negative self-talk, depression, dejection, anger, hurt, pain. It is it is something we experience, we all experience, in varying degree. I too have found myself there many, many times. I've had some very, very, very painful rejections. Too many, actually. And I have found myself at the abyss of disappointment of a great magnitude. This went on for a few years. Um, and I think there was a point in time where I was tired of the disappointment that I was experiencing with every single rejection. I was tired of my own bullshit. I wanted to change and shift the narrative of rejections in my life to look at it in better light and for all of those rejections to serve as a toolkit for me to propel further in my life. Reflecting on last 15 years of my life, there are a few lessons I have learned from my journey of rejections. The first lesson that I learned is that rejection is actually pushing me out of my comfort zone. That's where actually all the magic begins. I can, I can share a bit of a journey of what happened in my 20s. I graduated uh, as a major in genetics, but I found a path in marketing. I started with small jobs in marketing, and I was aiming for something much bigger in marketing. So I applied to hundreds of employers in Mumbai. Everyone rejected me, every single employer. For months and months and months to no end, I couldn't make that breakthrough. Heartbreaking, disappointing. I went in self-doubt. Many around me suggested that now I should you know, probably apply to a B school, get a formal degree in business management, that'll help propel my career further. I was not ready for that. Um, that small salary that I made, the temporary accommodations that I had, because I never had enough money <laughs> to have a permanent residence. I was not working in a big corporate in marketing, but I was so comfortable that I did not want to make this huge investment in my own education. So I decided to try a bit more. No success. So out of no choice, I decided to get out of my comfort zone. I said, OK, I'll apply to some B schools in India. I had a good resume, right score, stellar recommendations. But every single B school in India rejected me. XLRI, SPGen, uh, ISB, and there's so many others. And I had like a straight up rejection. This was bad. <laughs> this is turning out to be much worse than I expected. So a few people around me suggested, if you're not getting through B school in India, 
apply to a B school overseas. That is pushing me out of my comfort zone. I'm so comfortable here. This is home. I have friends. I have family. I don't want to go someplace new and start from scratch. That's not happening. But after many more months of unsuccessfully getting anywhere, I decided to take my shots. So I applied to a B school. It was University of Leeds. 2011, May, 15 days before the deadline uh, of the application, I sent in my application at University of Leeds. I get through. I am offered a full tuition waiver. And that's amazing. I, I, was, I was thrilled. OK, this is my step forward. Um, full tuition waiver is good, but I had to make do with my living expenses. It was then that I experienced familial rejection. My family did not think it was a wise idea to invest in a girl's education. So I ended up at Leeds pretty much penniless with a small bag of borrowed clothes from a friend who had just moved from Pennsylvania. It was a little scary to be in that financial crunch. But the rejection from family and that desperation only motivated me to participate in all the possible competitions that you can imagine on campus. Because anything that had attached uh, a monetary price to it, I, you would find me there. <laughs> and I won many of them. I won Marks and Spencer's Business Challenge. I won 250 pounds then. Um, it was Oxford's Marketing Challenge. Uh, I won Cranfield Regatta. Um, proceeds from all of these competitions went to sustaining my lifestyle financially. Great. Um, as I was marching through all these competitions, an employer once found me and offered me an internship at Northern Trust in corporate finance. Finance was not my comfort zone. I wanted to be in marketing. I had applied so many internships in marketing, every employer rejected me. Everybody. I had no other choice at that point in time but to take up this internship in, at Northern Trust because I needed stipend to survive through the summer. So I went to London. That internship in corporate finance and banking served as a path for me to have a successful career in mergers and acquisitions, strategy consulting, private equity, and that, that spanned across Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai, London. This very experience set me up for a success to get admitted at Harvard. And that, all of this experience, global experience, was the foundation of me being a very strong entrepreneur who could then have some successful exits. I am so thankful that all the jobs in marketing in India rejected me. I am so thankful that all the B schools in India rejected me. Had I gotten through any of these B schools in India, I would have still not had familiar support. I would have still not had financial support. I would have not ended up in those schools. At Leeds, I graduated debt-free. At Leeds, I had exposure of a different level, world-class faculties, international cohort, a very international platform that made me more adapt, adaptive and flexible when I was in many unfamiliar foreign locations. Looking back, I think all of those rejections from, from the B schools, employers, family, was pushing me out of my comfort zone so that I could explore something much bigger in life. And I did. I'm so, so grateful for the amazing, stellar, decade-long career that I've had spanning across the world. And some of the most amazing moments of my life happened in that journey. Second thing that my rejections taught me was that it is in those moments which we feel are moments of adversaries that we get our life's biggest lessons, our true calling. These are moments of growth for us. In 2016, I was in a relationship. It was an arranged setup. On surface, it was a match made in heaven to perfect people. Um, I was a private equity professional, a Harvard student, hemodermatologist, a New Yorker, 
everything seemed perfect. But behind the closed doors, it was an abusive relationship. I was trauma bonded, a codependent in that relationship. But I was so afraid of rejection, of losing that relationship, that I would endure everything. In 2018, the relationship was almost reaching a dead end. So I took a seven weeks break, and from Singapore, I moved to New York. I wanted to save my relationship, but he still rejected me. <laughs> Something wonderful happened in those seven weeks. An investor found me, offered me a job, he knew I was eligible for O1 visa, and through that, I would be a permanent resident of United States in EB1A category. I applied, and in those seven weeks, I became a legal resident and eventually permanent resident of United States. Years following that heartbreak and the loneliness of New York led me to the path of self-discovery. I spent about two years taking a lot of therapy sessions I worked on healing my childhood trauma that made me susceptible to narcissist and narcissistic relationship. As I embarked on that journey of self-healing, I discovered self-compassion, self-love, and forgiveness. Forgiving myself of what I did not know then to make those poor choices. I found love, but a little differently. There were friends there who saw me at my lowest low, supported me through and through, and I received unconditional love from them. Till date, they remain my pillar of strength. It was also the darkness of that relationship that made me more compassionate and generous. And I think I found my true calling in a lot of social work. Right after that, I became, um, I got on the leadership committee of American India Foundation. I started working at UN. I was motivated enough to donate 100% of proceeds of my startup uh, for all kind of uh, philanthropic charitable causes. I am so glad for the darkness of that relationship that gave me a purpose in life that led me to the journey of self-healing and make way for bigger and better love in my life. It, that the story of rejection doesn't end here, to big magnitude of incidents and then it just ends. No, it, it continues. I probably experience rejections every day at work, in startups, friends, family, everywhere. But now that I go through it ever, I, I take a pause. I ask myself, what is the situation trying to tell me? What is the situation teaching me? The rejection by all the employers in my 20s was universe telling me that you're settling for something too small, move out of your comfort zone. The familial rejection was telling me that stop depending on others, carve your own path and be super independent. The heartbreak, the romantic rejection, it was telling me that please heal your childhood trauma or else you can't make way for love in your life. I think that heartbreak was also life's way of humbling me after all the professional stellar success that I had seen. It made me more compassionate. I experienced self-humility and that for others. These incidents sometimes make me feel like I should give myself a little bit more credit than I do when I find myself in situation of loss. So now that I go through it, I don't indulge in any negative talk or any negativity. I, I give myself a lot of kindness, compassion, patience. I try to look at the lessons from these things. I have now wired my brain to think that whenever something negative is happening, whenever a rejection is happening, this is life's way of humbling me and giving me the wisdom to do things differently. It is very important that we change the narrative of these incidents in our head. These are not curses. Sometimes it is a blessing in disguise. These are not life's way of derailing us. These are life's way of redirecting us. This is life's way of sometimes just shaking us to the, to the core and saying, can you think of something better for yourself? Re-examine, introspect. 
redirect yourself. I am so grateful for all the rejections that happened in my life. I'm so grateful that a lot of things didn't work out the way I hope it, hoped it would be. I, am, I thank profusely all the people, places and things that rejected me because that made a way for something much bigger and better in my life. Most importantly, all these rejections made me the person that I am today. A woman of grace, humility, compassion, resilience and strength. And I think we all can take that narrative back in our head and think about it differently. So next time when we find ourselves in a situation where we think this is the end of the world, I have been rejected, there is no way further, I'm sure we all can take this, this narrative back in our hands and think about it differently. Is it rejection? Is it a redirection? Is it a really a curse or blessing in disguise? Thank you so much.